Hi everybody. So today I'm going to talk about what's blooming in my fall garden here in Central Texas. Stay tuned. So the first plant that I'm going to highlight is this gorgeous, gorgeous butterfly bush. This is the Proven Winners. This is Miss Violet. This plant um, I received as a one gallon plant. I put it in the ground about six weeks ago and it is having its fall flush. It just started maybe about two weeks ago. It started budding up and now I'm um, getting these beautiful violet flowers. So this is one plant that is blooming here in Central Texas in November, mid-November. The next plant, um, I need to clean out some of the Bermuda that um, was growing or is growing in the plant. We just created the edging or put the edging in that separates the Bermuda. And so there's some residual growth that has to be pulled out and eradicated. And so that's some of what you're seeing down in here. I don't know what variety this is. This is a Salvia gregii and it has very delicate pink blooms. So it is blooming here in Central Texas in mid-November. This plant um, is supposed to become about two to three feet tall and wide. It is also known for its drought tolerant. This is an unplugged blue salvia. I actually have three of these. However, two of them, they didn't make it after the transplant. So this one is doing quite well. I'm on the fence right now regarding this particular plant. Although I am discovering that it grows better in certain types of soil. So my front planter bed um, may not get enough, may not get enough um, sun and it may stay a little bit too moist. A lot of the soil there is filled that was added by uh, the landscapers when our front landscaping went in and I don't, it's not the best. I've, I've been, or for the first year or so I was actively working on improving that top fill that they added, but it certainly isn't the best for this plant. So this particular plant is not in that location. It's just growing in my clay soil. And this variety, this, this um, particular Unplugged So Blue, it seems to be doing better than the ones in my front planter. I cut this Belinda Dream, Belinda's Dream Rose back pretty hard about at the end of summer. So maybe about six weeks or so ago, it was probably about two feet in height. And here it is already reestablishing itself. It is probably about four feet in height. Sorry, I was not able to get out during its flush. You see all of these, all of these, these um, faded blooms um, that remain that I need to deadhead. However, there are some beautiful blooms that still exist on this plant. Um, there is a list that is produced. Um, it is Texas super, Superstars. It's plants that perform very well here in Central Texas. And this Belinda's Dream Rose is, is um, favored um, as a rose for this climate. So here in Central Texas, my purple fragrancia is also blooming right now here in mid-November. It um, started its fall flush as well. This 
Veronica Lavender Lightsaber is getting ready for its fall flush. Here is another Mystic Spire Salvia that I cut back hard and it is a favorite, like I said, of the butterfly and the bees. It is having its fall flush as well. So a lot of my roses are starting to have their fall flush too. This particular rose bush was just planted this fall. It was a, a, um, a quart and it is really taken off. This is an old garden rose. More roses. This butterfly bush in the foreground is starting to have its blooms as well. This is a blue chip. The bees are trying to extract what they can from this blue fortune agastache. More roses. Another Veronica, or my apologies. Um, this is Miss Expire Salvia, so this one was cut back as well. So this scepter aisle, I'm going to move it. It is in the wrong spot, and um, I don't know where I'm going to put it at this point. I'm trying to determine if I am going to need some type of structure or if I can actually keep these long octopus arms that it gets, if I can, can keep them in check and try and train it to be a shrub. I don't know. This is a new variety for me. So I, I don't know how it's going to accept uh, pruning to be a shrub or if I just need to give up and let it have its long octopus arms and grow um, like a climber. If any of you grow sceptered aisle and um, you grow it as a bush, please let me know exactly what it's going to take to um, tame these octopus arms. And while I'm mentioning that, if you're enjoying this content or if you know of anyone that would um, benefit from some of the content that I create here, please consider sharing this video. Um, please click subscribe on notifications. I would certainly appreciate that. And so moving on, these are denim and lace Russian, Russian sage. I have a trio right here. This is my um, long bed, my south long bed. And the bees are enjoying the flowers on these denim and, ra denim and lace Russian sage. Rose bush not in bloom. Two more denim and lace Russian sage. Another mystic spire salvia that I cut back. Boy, they really, looking at it and the shape and the blooms that I'm getting after cutting it back, it really does appreciate that that trim, that, that major trim um, that I provided at the end of summer, um, early fall here. Another rose bush. I have a lot of deadheading to do. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. <laughs> Still not as much as the Belinda's Dream, but the Belinda's Dream in its defense had um, a major, major, major flush just recently. I was out of town, so I didn't have the opportunity to record that flush. More butterfly bush, the blue chip. Um, Proven Winners variety. It's starting to have its fall blooms. Another rose bush back there. The rose bushes with the purple blooms that zip tied. Moving on, I have three um, ancient mariner roses. Uh, there's a bee 
that's enjoying the, was enjoying the bloom. And oh my God, what is that? Oh, that is, oh my, what are you doing on my bloom? Mr. Grasshopper? Hmm, it's going to be a pretty bloom when it opens. Okay, moving back towards the east part of the long bed. This is another Mystic Spire Salvia. Another Lavender Lightsaber starting its bloom. Now, this is becoming one of my favorite plants. This is the Beyond Midnight Caryopteris. Look at those blooms. I just love the color and the dark green leaves. So it is getting ready for its fall flush. I'm here for it. I really would, would enjoy it. Um, I grow probably at least 20 of this plant. So I am really eager to see these gorgeous blooms, especially this time of year when some other plants start to slow down. They know the days are getting shorter and it's time for them to go to sleep. Some of these other plants are like, I don't know what you're talking about. We're still having our party here. So here's part of, um, so over here is the Asian moon Budlia. Not certain how I feel about this plant. Um, it, it went in this year, so it was a one gallon plant that I received. Right now it's probably about four feet wide, and about 30 inches tall. I don't have anything against it. It's been pretty disease resistant, um, low maintenance. I'm just not certain if I enjoy the blooms and I don't know. I'm just not I'm just not sure about it at this point. So, we'll see what happens. Another plant that's in bloom right now is my gorgeous gorgeous chase tree. Um this is Rocksteady Vitax or Chase Tree. This was planted earlier this year as well, so back in April. It was a quart plant that I received directly from Proven Winners. And as you can see, it's probably at least four feet wide at this point, probably more than that. Um, I had to guess it's, it's approaching four feet in height and probably closer to approaching five feet in width. And if you want to know what the blooms look like, the color, here they are. Um, again, another very easy, to care for, drought tolerant, disease resistant plant um, that performs very well here in Central Texas. I grow several varieties of the Chase Tree Vitex tree, and um, this is just this is just one of them. Right now, my Yapon Holly is loaded with blooms. Um, I like to sit back on the porch, especially as it becomes colder, and watch the birds that are migrating stop by my yard and feast on these berries from the Chopin Holly. So here is another Denim and Lace Russian Sage that's blooming, and next to it is May Night Meadow Sage. This will become two feet by two feet. The salvia with the pink flowers is Pink Dawn. And then there is another Meadow Sage, so May Night. And then another Denim and Lace Russian Sage, which is also blooming. Another May Night is next to it. In the middle is Vinca. I'm going to put an unplugged white um, salvia where that Vinca is. And then here's another pink dawn. There's gorgeous pink blooms. Here's a close-up of those blooms on that pink 
dawn perennial salvia. It's a hybrid. It'll become about 20 inches high, 20 inches wide, another May night. And then, of course, you can see it's purple or blue blooms. And at the end is Denimalize Russian Sage with the blue boom. Thanks for watching.